Hey guys, welcome back to Tealstone Homestead. It has come to my attention that I've never done a proper garden tour of our little suburban garden. And you guys know that we are going to be moving here pretty soon. Sorry boys. And I don't really want to forget what this looks like. I've got some pictures of it, but I've never done a garden tour of it. So I kind of want to do that both for you guys and for me. Also, sorry about my chickens, they're very loud right now. <laughs> it is morning, so they are doing their thing, laying their eggs, so they get a little bit loud when they do that. We have a small suburban garden back here. I know you can't see it very well, but you will here in a second. But yeah, I just thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a garden tour um, and show you guys what all we have growing. Unfortunately, we are going to be leaving when a lot of this stuff is in like full swing, so that's kind of a bummer, but it's okay. I am very happy that if I am able to be a blessing to somebody not having to get as much fresh produce at the grocery store because I planted this for them, I'll be happy with that. Hey boys! How are you guys? <laughs> These are my cream grow outs, and it looks like they're out of food and water, so. Let's take care of them really quickly. If you were wondering what this is, um, my roof underneath is not all in one piece. Um, so I keep putting that piece of countertop on top of it so they don't escape because they know how to jump out of there. So uh, that's why that's on there. <laughs> you guys have no food or water. That's no good. You guys are starting to eat and drink a lot more now that you're getting so much bigger. These guys are, I think, exactly 12 weeks old today. Still haven't tattooed them. That's how far behind I am with stuff like that. Um, I've been keeping my creams until they're like 16 weeks old because I want to make sure that I am only selling the best and holding back my very best, um, taking them very, very seriously. So. These are 12 week old boys. I've got my two girls from the litter in the rabbit tree. Um, but these guys just really enjoy being on the ground. Still having some ear tipping troubles because of the weather, um, but it is cooling down again. So hoping they'll straighten out. I know they will, but we're gonna have some summer ears going on. <laughs> you guys have bigger ears than my winter babies. So this is my garden at a glance. This is the front of it. First off the bat, we have a giant blackberry arch. This thing is completely out of control. I probably need to prune it back. This is all new growth on it here and I'm not even sure what to do with it. It's not grown into the arch at all. So I might actually trim it off and feed it to the rabbits. The whole blackberry plant is safe for rabbits to consume. It's actually very good for them. So I like to feed them blackberry trimmings as much as I can. There's this whole guy too that is completely getting away from me. Um, so yeah, the blackberry arch is out of control, but at the same time, I love it because there are literally so many berries all over it. Like It is just loaded with berries, like it's crazy. They're all along the top too. You can see them up there, just everywhere. And I am impatiently waiting for these to ripen up because I really love blackberries and I wanna eat some of them, but obviously they're very, very green right now. If there is anything that I would encourage a newbie gardener to plant, it would definitely be either a blackberry or raspberry bush because these bad boys, they produce so quickly. And we just planted these last year. I think we planted two plants per box, which in retrospect is probably far too much because this is what happens the second year. Um, even the first year though, we had like a ton of berries and it was already growing all over the arch. The, this year it's just completely exploded. So if you are looking for something very prolific and sustainable, I would definitely recommend planting a blackberry bush. So we are gonna go into the garden. And yes, my garden is very small, but this is what it looks like on the inside. But we are going to look over here. So over here, this is my chamomile, and the sun is not out right now, so all of the petals are laying back on it. But chamomile 
Um, I grow it mainly because I just love the plant itself. I think the plant itself is like super pretty, but also it makes a great thing to feed the rabbits as well as it makes really good tea. And my husband really likes the tea. Um, I will drink it occasionally, but it's mainly him that likes it. <laughs> Chamomile is one of those things that grows super fast. I think for tea, you can do like one tablespoon, like one to two tablespoons of chamomile, uh, and then you're boiling water and just let it steep for like 15 minutes. And then we like to add honey to ours because um, honey is really good in chamomile tea, but it is supposed to be very calming. It's a very calming herb. And then right next to the chamomile, I have oregano growing, and this actually came back from last year and um, I just really like it. I mean, we like to cook with oregano. Um, it's very good for rabbits. It's really good for medicinal purposes and it just, you can clip it. This is a section that I clipped and already it's growing back like crazy. So it's one of those things that just keeps giving um, for most of the season. In the winter, it does look like it completely dies, but then it does come back for us anyway. So I really like to grow oregano because we like to cook with it. It goes really well on like pizza and in pizza sauce and in soups and various things like that. So we really do enjoy growing the oregano and if you're gonna grow oregano, I would consider growing it in a spot where you want it to keep coming back every year. So in the same box that the uh, blackberries are growing, I have echinacea growing um, on the outer side of it. Um, but we are growing echinacea here as well. And we planted these last year and they came back this year. And I'm not really sure why they look so ugly. Um, echinacea is also known as a coneflower. Um, it's supposed to be very medicinal. Um, it's supposed to be really good for like the immune system, I think, and stuff like that. But um, I don't really know why they're so ugly. These ones up here look a little bit more promising and this one too. But yeah, I'm not really sure why we're not really developing a lot of petals. <laughs> we also have this two-headed echinacea here. He's an anomaly. I'm not really sure what he's doing, but yeah, our echinacea is doing some weird stuff this year. I'm not really sure about that. <laughs> there is more echinacea growing on this side, but this one, um, this is like the closest we've gotten over on this side to any bloom so far, so I'm not really sure why it's taking so long on this side. Honestly, the blackberries are probably choking out, but, um, but yeah, that's our echinacea. And then over here, we have the kale box. I mainly use the kale for the rabbits. Um, I grow a lot of kale because my rabbits really enjoy kale. It's very good for them. It's just a very quick growing leafy green that my rabbits tend to really enjoy. So I really enjoy giving that to them. I've been growing kale for years now. It's one of those things that I feel very confident growing. And also I think it's really pretty. Um, and this year I just decided to do an entire box full of kale because I want to give the rabbits some every single day if I can. So um, it's, been, it's been very nice to be able to give them fresh food almost every day. They still do rely a lot on their pellets, but growing fresh food for our rabbits has definitely cut down on the feed bill just a little bit. I'm not saying that we completely feed them just greens, but um, it has helped in diminishing uh, the price of our feed bill and the frequency of having to go get feed for them. So over on this other side, we have a bunch of bolted lettuce and actually there was some spinach right here, uh, but it bolted as well. That one in the very back there, the tallest one, is actually a bolted spinach plant and I'm just waiting on that one to harvest some seeds off of it because I want to try to save seeds from everything. But yeah, all of our lettuce has already bolted because of how hot it's been. Um, which is expected. And honestly, I'm not sure if we're gonna do lettuce on this large of a scale uh, in the future, because I just feel like in my climate anyway, it almost immediately goes to bolting when it gets warm out. So if we do lettuce in the future, we might do them in containers instead um, and try to keep them in the shade as much as possible because in the garden beds, they've just completely bolted. They, they do this every single time, so. Um, but we really do enjoy having lettuce, it's just, we would like to have it a little bit longer. <laughs> Next to the bolted spinach and lettuce, we have our Edgevarsky peppers. These peppers, you guys, I have grown them for the last two years and I absolutely love them. They are so delicious. And also I actually saved seeds from last year for my Edgevarskys and I feel like they've grown back even better this year. So they are just insane. Like I'm really, I'm waiting for this one to ripen up. Um, you can see where it's kind of turning red there at the top. 
I feel like they take a really long time to ripen, um, but you can eat them green too, but they are just so good. A couple of them are leaning a little bit. I need to put some steaks. It's just crazy how quickly they grow. Like, look at this. It's, there's a giant one on this one as well. It's just crazy. Like all of the plants have like so many peppers on them. I actually missed the ball on planting our corn and potatoes this year. And since we are moving, I just decided to do something a little bit less labor intensive. Um, so I planted a bunch of sunflowers and I don't know why, um, but I feel like now I need to plant sunflowers every single year because I am absolutely in love with these. They are so tall and oh my gosh, they're just so pretty though. Like they add something to my garden that just makes me really happy. My husband said that these are a dose of serotonin. I don't disagree with him. Like I am really loving the sunflowers. They're just so much fun. They are made to be kind of different colors. Look at this one. I think this one is my favorite one so far. It is just like the, the colors on it though. It's like the perfect autumn colors, but they are just so bright. Like, and you can see them from the house too. And they just keep producing little flowers and they're just making me really happy. <laughs> Next to our sunflowers, we are growing basil. And I told you guys one time that I cannot have a garden without basil. Basil is one of my favorite things to grow uh, for multiple reasons. We use basil a lot in cooking, so there's that. But also the smell of it, it smells so good. Like I just love it. So if there's anything that I would encourage you guys to grow, uh, that would also be easier to do on a small scale or easier to just start out doing it would definitely be basil I pinch off my basil a lot um, In the growing season like this right here when it starts bunching up like this and like this um, And sometimes you can even see flowers start to grow on it I'll just pinch it off and you can either eat it yourself um, Or you can give it to rabbits or whatever livestock you have pinching off the ends like that actually tells the plant that you want it to continue producing leaves instead of seeds because a plant's mission is to produce seeds and uh, I don't want it to do that. I'd want it to keep producing these leaves here because this is what I use in cooking So um, it's one of those things that you do have to prune But I actually really like pruning basil because it smells amazing basil is really good in bruschetta and pizza sauce and just on pizza and just basically on everything you guys i love basil so um yeah i would encourage anybody to grow basil the sun has beaten me to this side but these are our cucumbers and there's so many cucumbers on them already there's a big cucumber back there there's a big cucumber here Really, this is like the perfect harvesting size in my opinion. Um, we use cucumbers a lot for making pickles. Like, there's a little guy. He's still got a flower on the end of him. Here's another one with a flower on it. But yeah, we love using cucumbers. We'll eat them straight out of the garden. Um, they're really good with just like ranch or salt on them. We, we like to make pickles. We like to just eat them right out of the garden. We like to put them in salads. So there's just a lot of reasons that we like to grow cucumbers um they're really good so but yeah our cucumbers are producing like mad and then on this side we have our paul robison tomatoes i am so so excited for these we have so many tomatoes growing already it is just crazy we have not had the first blossom end rot problem this year which i feel very lucky um, and i think it's probably because of how i started the seeds first and foremost and then also how i amended the soil last year they're just getting like so big and i've been impatiently waiting on these to ripen up because i want my tomatoes so bad like look how big they are i'm so excited for them um and they're doing so well this year, so I'm just very happy. I did end up topping my plants because they were out growing the trellis, and so I topped them to convince them to stop growing so tall and start producing tomatoes, and I think it worked. We've already had fried green tomatoes this year, and they were really, really good, but I really need these to turn red. <laughs> I'm not really sure why our leaves are curling at the bottom. They're only doing it on the bottom. The ones up top are completely fine. So if anybody knows why that happens, let me know because I have no idea. Um, it doesn't seem to be really affecting the plant at all. 
Um, so I'm not really worried about it. It could be this like intense like heat that we've been having. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure. On the other row of tomatoes, we have these yellow ones that are growing. These tomatoes are yellow when they're ripe and we've been waiting on them as well. Um, I've never grown a yellow tomato before, so I'm actually really excited to see what we think of them. Um, but they're looking really good. I topped this row as well, but as you can see, tomatoes do not care. They don't respect my topping. And over here, we are back in the sun. There's not a lot to see here other than just the insane growth of my Blue Lake pole beans. These are green beans. Um, there's nothing on them so far, uh, but they are flowering. So we should be seeing green beans here pretty soon. But yeah, they just, they go insane. They just completely overtake the trellis and um, we're very excited to get some green beans. We eat green beans a lot with our meals in the summer uh, when we have them, so I'm waiting for them. I really want some fresh green beans. Sauteed green beans, you guys, if you've never done that, with some oil and garlic and salt and just saute them, and they are just so tasty. So I didn't really get around to the fabric pots as much as I wanted to this year. Um, time just kind of got away from me, and you know, like you guys know, we are moving, so uh, I just didn't get around to it as much. I did plant my dill, um, so we have dill coming on, so that is nice and exciting, but we also have dill <laughs> growing over here. I know we've got a lot of weeds coming up, but there's dill that has just grown so big in our walkway here, and I actually feel like it's growing better uh, through the weed fabric and through the mulch than it is and the fabric pot so I don't really know what to make of that like I don't know if you guys can see it because of the sun but like there's like so much dill here I feel like this weed fabric must be the wimpy weed fabric because things just are growing straight through it exhibit a exhibit a like just everything is growing through the weed fabric. <laughs> so now we're at the very back of the garden and I wanted to show you guys my squash plants because I am just enamored with the squash plants, you guys. Like these are just insane. My squash dream is coming true and I'm gonna be able to pick them off the trellis very, very soon. So on this side, we have a spaghetti squash and this spaghetti squash has like just completely taken off. We have some really, big ones that are ready to harvest basically so we've got that big one right there we've got this big one right here we've got another one over there and they're just growing so fast it looks like we've got another one right there that's coming on and i am just absolutely in love with growing squashes on a trellis i feel like this is one of my absolute favorite things to do in a garden ever now is just growing a squash trellis. Like, look at this, it just looks so pretty. So I'm very, very excited. And then on this side, this side we have our butternut squash and these ones are growing just a tad bit slower, but they are growing. Look at this cute little thing. So we have this butternut squash here and they are supposed to be a little bit smaller, but um, then there's this one right here. And I just want to make some butternut squash soup. There's a whole bunch of them coming on. Some of them are getting blossom and rot. I'm not really sure why it's just this squash in particular. I don't know if the soil in this one box over here needs amended. But regardless, most of them are growing. So just look at them. They are so cute. I didn't grow zucchini this year, you guys, because um, we have really bad squash bugs here. Um, I feel like lots of people have really bad squash bugs, but... I just didn't want to have to contend with that as we are also trying to move. So I just grew some climbing squash and I have been having to train this to climb the trellis as well. You can see where this guy is kind of getting away from me. I really need to weave him uh, through the hog panel trellis, but um, just training them and then having the squash just droop down like this. It is just so magical to me. I'm so happy that I actually made this happen and I'm so stoked to eat spaghetti squash like I'm very very excited I honestly want to eat one of them tonight if we can <laughs> I did this one other time on a video where I collected a whole bunch of forage for my rabbits and then fed it to them but this is just what I've been doing this year you guys I've been uh, 
collecting things out of the garden that I can feed the rabbits, like overgrown chamomile, bolted lettuce. The kale is basically for them, like all for them. And also because you guys saw how overgrown my blackberry arch is, I trimmed off a bunch of uh, that as well, because like I said, blackberry plant, it's very good for rabbits, so um, I like to give them that. There is bolted lettuce, there's kale, there's chamomile pieces. There's also some dill in here that uh, looked like it was gonna be on its last leg pretty soon. So honestly, it's just kind of like a big conglomerate of things that we aren't going to eat but would actually be really good for the rabbits. So this is just how I've been kind of trying to supplement them with fresh feed this year in lieu of trying to get away from feeding so many pellets. Um, obviously with a breeding program like I have, like I have to rely on pellets. Um, it's a complete pellet. It is hay based. It's a really good pellet for them. A lot of pet owners say the pellets are bad. Pellets are not bad. Pellets are a complete feed and they are perfectly safe to feed your rabbits. But um, there is something to be said for feeding fresh forage when you have it. So to combat the feed prices and to also get back to a more natural way of feeding, I've just been trying to collect things out of my garden that I will be able to feed the rabbits. you guys I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you enjoyed seeing my garden my little suburban garden I imagine someday it'll be just a little bit bigger but honestly I really love my garden like I don't want to change it too much it's manageable for me and it's a lot of fun to take care of a garden that size so um, and also I hope you enjoyed seeing my rabbits enjoy their forage that we got for them. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also hit that like button down below and also hit the bell notification as it lets you know every time I go live or upload a brand new video. And yeah, comment down below if you have any questions for me. I would love to hear your garden experience and also if you forage for your rabbits as well. But yeah, with that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.